Hi guys, this is Snap, and today we're going to be talking everything about curse support. There are a couple different variations of this build, ranging from blasphemy to curse on hit using poet's pen, and even using the Wedre's Tress to apply curses to the enemies through a totem. However, the most prevalent and easy to use is the blasphemy version. Blasphemy is a skill gem that turns your curses into an aura that will apply the curse to the enemy as soon as they are in range. This makes the curses very easy to apply to the enemy, as all you have to do is simply walk into range. While other variants might have you put down a totem, or even attack the enemy directly to apply your curses. The main focuses on this build are to apply as many curses as we can to the enemy while also not sacrificing our survivability in T16 Beyond maps. The curse support offers a tremendous amount of offensive and defensive utility for the entire party, our defensive curses being Enfeeble and Temp Chains, while our offensive curses involve Assassin's Mark, Conductivity, Projectile Weakness, and Elemental Weakness. This particular build is very middle of the road, it has very obtainable gear within the first few days of the league, it can fit up to 6 curses of your choice, and while some curse support builds might be able to push 9, even 10 curses into their build, this is designed to be playable on League Start with gear that's obtainable within the first few days, while also being extremely cheap to gear. While the price is very League to League, sometimes we've geared our curse support in something like 20 or maybe even 30 chaos worth of gear. Starting off with Ascendancy, our most obvious choice is Occultist tier, and there's a few reasons why. The first being Profane Bloom, which allows your curses to be applied to Hexproof enemies. Hexproof is a mod that can show up on various maps rolls, it prevents your curses from being applied to any enemy. This Ascendancy Notable allows us to bypass that entirely, allowing us a greater pool of maps we're able to run. The second reason to go Occultist is Malediction, giving us an extra max curse. The other Ascendancies aren't as important here, just reducing the enemy's chaos and cold resistance by 20% each. Here's a preliminary look at our full passive tree at level 98. Some mandatory nodes we should be grabbing are Whispers of Doom for an extra curse, Hexmaster at the top right here, as well as Skittering Runes for increased effect of our curses. In order to squeeze in all of our our curses, we do need a few mana reservation wheels on the tree, starting with Sovereignty, Leadership, finally Charisma. We also do take a single point of the mana reservation here, up by Chaos Inoculation. From here, every single one of your skill points is going into Energy Shield. Ever since the Energy Shield nerfs in 3.7, this tree structure is the most efficient Energy Shield pathing you can get, utilizing not one, not two, but three energy from within jewels. Essentially, you're just converting this entire constitution wheel into energy shield, as well as grabbing a little bit of well-needed resistances down here in the scion tree. With our endgame tree in mind, we can now talk a little bit about leveling and how to transition our leveling tree into our endgame tree. The meta leveling builds for PoE are constantly changing. However, what we can do is come up with a generic leveling tree that we can use regardless of the meta skill being used that roughly mimics our late game tree so that we can transition to it a little bit later when we have access to regret orbs. Similar to an aura support, the curse bot can transition to a full support build come level 25, maybe 30. The thing that's generally preventing you from transitioning to a full support very early is actually the curse cap. Obviously our base curse cap is one, however we do have pretty quick access up here to Whispers of Doom, which brings us up to two. However, two curses doesn't quite warrant a full transition to support quite yet. What we do need is a third curse. The third curse is usually the tipping point at which you could consider going a full support build. However, we don't get our second curse until Cruel Lab, as our normal lab or first lab is dedicated to Profane Bloom. Malediction is unfortunately locked behind this. A great solution to this is if you're playing Trade League, you can pick up a Doedre's Damning Ring pretty early, which will give you your third curse. This ring has no level requirement and can drop from level 1, so by the time you're maybe level 25 or 30, these should be on the market and you can pick them up for maybe a chaos or two. So our goal here is to maybe hit level 30, 35, slap on our three curses, and start following around our AoE carry to do XP grinds. So let's talk about what we can do with the tree at the very start, depending on what is the meta skill at the moment. You're almost always going to start by going up these spell damage nodes at the start. From here, if you want to go mines or traps, I'd highly recommend going over here to the right, as you can get access to the volatile mines cluster over here on the right. Keep in mind you do have access to some lightning damage nodes over here as well as crackling speed which is very good. You also have access to the fire, lightning, and frost walker nodes. From here you want to start making your way over to Hexmaster so you can grab it by about level 30, maybe 35. From here you can honestly start to fill out all of your curse nodes as well as grabbing some life. You're going to be life based for the majority of your leveling including early mapping and are going to make the transition to ES maybe around level 70. You can start to pick up stuff like Hexmaster. You can even make your way over to the sovereignty wheel over here giving yourself a little bit more mana reservation reduction. This also unlocks the purity of flesh wheel which can give you some much needed life while leveling. If you need more life while leveling you can even pick up the melding cluster here. A thing I like to do from here is to make my way down to the constitution wheel as all of this life is going to get converted anyways later down the line. We're not going to be using any regrets 
when we respect this to ES, because all we have to do is pick up this jewel socket here and socket an energy from within. Here you can see the tree already beginning to take shape, and from here you can just start filling out the wheels that you're missing, and eventually using the regrets you do get to unspec out of the mine and damage clusters you took earlier. Great, so now we know what we're going to do with our tree. We can start to talk about maybe leveling uniques we can take advantage of, and as well as endgame gearing. As discussed earlier, we're going to be on the lookout for a Dewedre's Damning, or maybe any other plus one curse pieces we can get that will allow us to fully transition to a curse bot. In terms of items while leveling, you're just going to be looking for any rare that has life and maybe some resistance, nothing special here. The the crucial period here comes around level 70, maybe 75, when you are making the leap from life to ES. This can be a little precarious because if you make the transition a little bit too early, you can end up breaking your character just a little bit. It's very imperative that you save up all of your refund points that you've done while leveling so you don't have to buy regrets. Also, it's not a terrible idea to go back in the story and maybe complete some of the regret point quests that you may have skipped. At around level 70 or 75, there's a lot of gear available to us that we can get from maybe one Alk, maybe one Chaos. They can give us a decent starter ES unique set. If you have a trader or economist, make sure they have all of these items before you do make the transition. Or alternatively, take 20, maybe 30 minutes to go buy all of the items you may need to make your transition smooth. The items you need in no particular order are Baited Breath, Lori's Lantern, Ephemeral Edge, Solaris Larica, Doedre's Scorn, Syntrex if they're available, a high ES rare shield, some rare high ES gloves, maybe in the 70 to 90 range, and an Eye of Chiula. Keep in mind that all of these uniques are great. However, you can replace these with any high ES rares if you find them. These items should get you going on your transition to ES, and then you can start working on your end game items. Speaking of, here's our end game item list. You might notice how there are a lot of uniques on this build and that is very intentional. The build is designed to be cheap, effective, and easy to build, and the uniques accomplish all of those things. A lot of these uniques listed here are maybe 5, 10 chaos at most. Starting with the ephemeral edge, it just gives us a very nice 50% increased energy shield on the high end and 40% on the low end. This thing costs absolutely nothing and is your best in slot energy shield main hand. For the shield slot, it is none other than Prism Guardian. This thing might be expensive the first day or two of the league, however it does drop to just one chaos after the first few days. This item is crucial for allowing us to fit in all of our curses and auras that we need for the build. Heretic's Veil is another one of those curse items that is just an uncontested best in slot for curse bots. It has a ton of ES and evasion. It gives us a free plus one level to our curse, as well as linking it to Blasphemy, as well as another reduced mana reservation that we need. If you have the money, feel free to buy a corrupted or even an enchanted version. For corruptions, you're looking for a 90% local mana multiplier. And for enchantments, you're looking for any increased effectiveness of curse. Jazz is another one of those mandatory items. It just allows us to give us the correct reservation to make the build work. There really is no alternative here. Vixen's Entrapment is another one of those items that is pretty much irreplaceable. It is the only item in the glove slot that can give you an extra curse, and considering the build is based around giving curses, this is obviously mandatory. The boot slot is where you have a little bit of choice. You might not be wondering why these aren't wind shrieks, and that is because you cannot go a sixth curse until you get some extra mana reservation either from an enchantment or a corruption on your helmet, so usually you can wait on that until you get the extra reservation. Once you do have the reservation available to you though, you should definitely switch to wind shrieks and go and use your sixth curse. Star of Ray class is an interesting one. It just gives you a gigantic area of effect to your curse skills. This makes it so your blasphemy nearly makes it off screen, which is really nice. It makes it so your temp chains and enfeeble is slowing enemies that you can't even see. It also grants you a decent mobility skill. Our first rank slot is Doedre's Damning. It gives us an extra curse. There is no alternative, unfortunately. This slot is pretty much locked in. Your second rank should just look to be max energy shield, as well as some filler stats, strength and dex if you need it, as well as any resists you can squeeze in there. On your belt slot, we have Baited Breath. It just gives us a ton of ES. It is dirt cheap, maybe one Alk. It also has increased energy shield recharge rate, which is very nice. For the jewels, we have three energy from withins, as well as a potency and efficiency. Please note that you can get any one of these corrupted with minus one reservation, so you can fit in your sixth curse. Here you can see where you put the energy from withins, one here, one here, as well as one here. It doesn't really matter where you put the efficiency or the potency either. As for the flask setup, you're going to be using a soul catcher or soul ripper if you want to spend the money on it, and you have one resist flask of each element, including fire, lightning, and cold. And then you have a Alchemist Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, so you can keep up in the party. As for the affixes on these elemental flasks, it's really up to you. I highly prefer Experimenters as a prefix. The Experimenters prefix gives you increased duration, which means you have to press them less. However, Chemists and Perpetual are also decent options here. 
As for the suffixes here, you need to become immune to bleed, freeze, and curse. It doesn't really matter which flask you put them on, just make sure that you're immune to all three of those. As for the gem links, I'm going to be leaving the POB in the description as always. Feel free to tinker around with the order of these if you'd like, but this is the order we're running with right now. Keep in mind that the curses listed here are most efficient for Tornado Shot Deadeye, and if your carry is playing a different build, these can look a little bit different. As for Vol skills, we're going to be running Vol Disc as well as Vol Haste. As for the rest of the gem links, you can fill them with utility and movement skills of your choice. For mobility, I highly recommend Phase Run and Flame Dash, and for utility, stuff like Decoy Totem and Steel Skin are very good contenders. For Pantheons, we're going Soul of Arakali and Soul of Shikari. We want to reduce as much chaos damage as we can, and these are the two Pantheons that accomplish that. And last but not least, our bandit is going to be Alira, and eventually we are going to respec Elrion. That about wraps it up for the curse support. I might have glossed over some things, and if you have any questions regarding curse bots, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try to respond to as many people as I can. And once again, I'm Snap, and thanks for watching.